Many years ago, I came across a few lines in a book that I connected with. They were, it's easy to judge, but you never know another person's heart, what gives them strength and what breaks them down. I have learned to listen more and speak less. The result has been eye-opening conversations and inspirational moments that I have shared with you right here. Hello and welcome to Crystal One-on-One. -on -one. We are on location at Le Chateau Brasserie Belge. That's at Quality Hill Boutique Mall. And I'm excited because today I have someone who is known as the girl from the videos, but she has a name. She's also very well known on Twitter. That's a very big space that you're active in, I yes. think. Uh, Linda, Dane. Yes. Welcome, welcome to the thank show. Thank you. It's good to be here. It's actually good to meet you. I've been a fan. Oh, wow. Well, thank you. It's <laughs> so nice I feel to like we're in, the, we're in the wrong seat. It should be the other way around. Yeah. Uh -huh. I should be the one asking you questions. I'm saying this is so exciting because I want to know your story. I don't uh, know that much about you. No one does. Yeah. Turns out. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> it's so a good thing. Okay, so Dane, can yes. we first understand that name? Because I am very sure there are people who have murdered it, who have called you They're Danny cute. or Danny. Yes, or... Danny a lot. Mm -hmm. I actually hear Danny a lot. So I respond to Danny, I respond to Dan, I respond to the Danny, I respond to anything. Because mm -hmm. I now know some people, it'll take them a minute to actually take okay. on the name. Okay. But it's Dane. Dane. It's actually cut short from Mejani Dane. It's a French um, oh. name. Mm -hmm. I'm a flower. Is it Mejani Dane? <laughs> yes. Is it? Okay. That's the long version. Okay. And are you Ugandan? Are you... Randis. Ah, okay. So that's how that happened. So the French side. <laughs> that's how we get the francophone side yep. of things. Okay. So you're here in Uganda though. Yes. <laughs> and you're and now I'm here working. to stay. <laughs> you're here to stay? <laughs> I'm here to stay. We got her. I love this place. Oh, <laughs> yay. Uganda is a beautiful, beautiful country. Beautiful place. Very dramatic. Very so, so to speak. There's a lot happening. Every time you wake up, there's something new. So yes, mm. I love it here. Okay. You can't miss. A All beat. right. And you're a presenter on the beat yes, on NTV. Now I am. About three months in. Yeah, about three months. Congratulations. In. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's good to be there. It feels like home. It feels like home. So now you're in this media space. Yes. And then I remember just seeing the first clips of you yeah. doing all these little comedy clips and being like, hmm, this is really interesting. <laughs> and then next thing, I'm seeing like things starting to happen for you. You didn't think that girl was nuts, huh? <laughs> no, I didn't. I knew you were playing a role. Yes. But it was really cool because I've always thought that when it comes to even acting, comedy is probably the hardest thing to do. Yes. Because you, you put yourself out there on a plate. Yes. And you have And you to don't know what people are going to receive. Exactly. But I just... And you can't take yourself too seriously as I, well. Most people don't take me serious. Because but it, it started of, out more of just trying to bring awareness to little things that are actually happening. Oh. But you try to look for a different way to put it out there that people will pay attention to. Because there's some things that will happen in the news, but people are not really a big fan. Okay, most of the people our age mm -hmm. are not a big fan of news. They're like, ah, oh, we find that a bit boring. Mm. Or I'm not going to sit down and listen to or watch the news at seven o'clock because that's their picky picky movie hour. But they will check out their phone to see something nice, something funny. Mm. So if you bring out, let me say, for instance, the issue that happened with uh, Charlie Gonza and you bring it out in a comedic way mm -hmm. then they'll be like what really happened so they'll find out what happened they just try to make them know what's happening but in a way that they can relate to which okay. is what I was thinking but I looked stupid <laughs> no you didn't <laughs> I looked stupid I was just trying to put it out there well you, you made us laugh that well, doesn't mean you look stupid that's a good thing but that's an interesting place to come from. Are you passionate about politics and news? What's the background? Not entirely. I've just always wanted to be able to speak and be heard. Okay. If, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, most of the people out there can... You have something to say. You want people to notice things. You want people to pay attention to particular things. But you wouldn't know how to get them to pay attention to all those things. Mm -hmm. So you look for a way. Okay. You strike a balance. You're like, maybe if you bring this out, something that's happening, but bring it out in a way that people will actually listen or pay attention to, they'll see that it's actually happening. Okay. Like it's real. Okay. Uh, people will make fun of... And it's I, serious actually. Yeah, of particular things. Um, we had a, a bit of a time when people were, I would call it body shaming. Yes. And they'd make fun of girls with the long foreheads or girls with this. Mm. So I go out there and I put out a video actually showing my forehead because I do have a long forehead. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, I mean, there's nothing to be ashamed of. So mm. now girls all of a sudden are shocked, are impressed though. 
that the week after everyone is posting pictures of their foreheads and we're like yay <laughs> girls were ashamed of that then they got when they see the comedic side that it can actually be just normal and funny mm -hmm. to share those things they they let loose and girls were no longer afraid to post a picture with their shiny foreheads or whatever because mm -hmm. it seemed not funny to them okay. so body shaming became more of comedic than it was saddening mm -hmm. and i feel like that's what i wanted to do make a bit of an impact if i yeah. could yeah be before it's too late that's nice i yeah. mean well comedy has always been used to actually shed a light on serious issues yeah because people feel i guess less uncomfortable when they're able to look to at laugh at it look at things right in front of them yeah. but through that angle yeah okay were you born here in uganda or in yes. Rwanda? i was okay. born here my, yeah. my parents were here they had come here because they were it was around that time, I was born in 94, <laughs> so yes, it was around that time. And I was born actually around here, in Zambia. In Zambia Hospital, yes. <laughs> yeah. It's like right around the corner. Yeah. And yes, life just kept moving on for them. They travel a lot, so mm. I was basically like, Why is bare that? handbag. <laughs> okay. They always work, okay. kind of thing. So Your dad where mom would go, I would go where dad would go, this one goes, so just keep switching. So I didn't really have a stable who okay. as such childhood okay it did stabilize when it came to like high school more of high school so before like where would you live wherever they were okay <laughs> and were they working for like the un or some kind of um they're just they had okay i never used to ask questions <laughs> but but they had like a private contract with different companies so where they were like taken is where they would go oh okay. that kind of thing but it was a good thing Mm -hmm. I got to learn. Most people are like, when you tell someone that your origin is from Rwanda and you can speak English, they're like, how? And speak it really well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, I can explain. <laughs> but I can't really explain, but I can explain. It's okay. a good thing. I got to learn a lot, you get to see a lot, you get to interact with different types of people. Mm. I think I just got to learn how to be around people because of that, because yeah. you'd leave me anywhere and I could be able to make it. <laughs> yeah, pretty I'd much. You learn how to assimilate yes. when you're young and you travel a lot. Yes. It was, it was a beautiful thing. You see people of all different kinds mm -hmm. and I feel like it was a good thing. So I'm like, not exactly a normal person. I can okay. blend any, <laughs> anywhere. Yeah. Where you throw me is where I'll just... When you look back, is there like a country that you lived in for a while or that um, you really have special memories? Yeah, I had special memories here. Okay. This is like, Uganda is my so place. So this is the base? This is my place. I'd always want to just be here. Mm -hmm. uh, my brother as well. I have an older brother that also still here full time. And I feel like I'm Ugandan. Mm -hmm. I am for Uganda, yeah. in Uganda. I want to be here for like oh. the rest of my life. Okay, <laughs> yeah. so you said things kind of stabilized when you were in high school? Yeah. So in terms of, what about school, like primary school? Were um, you moving then? Yeah, or? we were moving then. I did different schools, some of which I don't remember. Mm -hmm. <laughs> some I may not remember because I was young. I, do, I did do uh, my P7 from here, that's okay. Kaboja. Yeah. Kaboja Junior, Takasha Avenue. Mm. I was a troublesome little girl, though, <laughs> if you were to ask were you? around, so don't ask around. <laughs> I was the story, what do you <laughs> no, mean, don't no, I'm ask? Just, I'm just like, I'm stubborn, and I think even then I had that little element in me of trying to make fun of being okay. when I'm not supposed to, so it's like, so I just mean always you looking for rules or a laugh. You didn't want to conform, I mean. I was, I was breaking rules, but I was just looking for a laugh, okay. <laughs> so that kind of, I was irritating, I would guess. So. Irritating? <laughs> <laughs> I would think that's because a big word for a child. I wouldn't know how else to put it because they couldn't get rid of me. I'm, I am smart, so to say, not to uh, not to be pompous or anything. But I have always been smart, but mm. stubborn at the same time. Okay. So they'd be like, "What should we do with this one?" Mm. Like we can't send her away because she has the grades, but she's stubborn. Yeah. So, yeah, but they got used to it, I guess. So what's like it. one prank that you, you pulled off and you were like hee hee hee? I painted, I spray painted a wall and they made me have to paint it over again. But I don't know why I was doing it. I was just... Was it like I an even like piece? I was, I was like, even oh, trying to hide to it because I wrote my own name. That was the dumbest thing about it. <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't deny it because I'm like, ah, oh, snap. I thought about it afterwards. I'm like, I should have written something else. Children do things like that. <laughs> So I kind of sold myself out, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it was okay. It looked nice mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. But they made me paint over it again. So. Okay. That's a good thing. <laughs> it's a good punishment. It is. Okay. It's you, a you. good punishment. I learned my lesson. Mm -hmm. I still went there to keep painting things for some reason. Just, it was a habit. I like. <laughs> okay. 
okay. It was a thing because it, it got stuck in, in me. It was also, I think, another passion. Mm -hmm. I had a thing for artsy kind of things. Though my brain would be more focused on sciences, but then my heart was more focused on arts. Okay. Yeah, that kind so of thing. So does that mean that you paint now, you draw now? I I had mm -hmm. a thing for artsy kind of things. Though my brain would be more focused on sciences, but then my heart was more focused on arts. Okay. Yeah, that kind so of thing. So does that mean that you paint now, you draw now? I can, yes, I, not commercially. Yeah. I have done a couple of paintings. I do do customized phone cases. I customize my own clothes. <laughs> Just It's that thing that you have in you that you know you can do it, but you haven't really taken it on like seriously. Mm -hmm. My I fail to take it on seriously because I'm afraid of judgment. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> that kind of, um, what if they don't like it? Kind of thing. I think we all have that to some degree, but you yeah, know what they say, you I have just, to push past the fear. I tried. I tried and I started actually making phone cases for other people, but at first I used to make the money for myself. Okay. Because I can't judge myself. I know what I want. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> mm -hmm. so I'm like, and either way, I can't fail myself because. I'm doing something I want. So I would tell the customized phone cases, I'd basically do anything that you want. Okay. If it's your picture, if it's what I do it according to what you want. Mm -hmm. Not like I'm giving you any ideas because everyone else has that particular thing they've always wanted to hold. Maybe you want to hold a phone case that has your face on it. Mm -hmm. It depends on what someone wants. So that's what I would do. Okay. For the clothes, I have I'm not yet adjusted to making for other people clothes. Okay. But you I make feel like, your own clothes in I some feel ways? like people get picky. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're picky too, right? Yeah, I am. Cause cause I'm, I'm looking at what she's wearing right now. You have oh, black on, yes. leather jacket, and then the shirt also has a Very bit of leather. Yes. And I'm looking at that, I'm like, okay, number one, these are tomboy vibes, big time. Yeah, the all black. Yes. And even just the way you carry yourself. I'm, I'm a girl of the simpler things. Okay. If I could call it that. Mm. I, black is my favorite color, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> and um, getting me out of black is hard. I find it like an easy pick for me. I don't know how to carry handbags. That's a fact that most people don't know. Actually, I usually well, do there's like, no handbag anywhere, I'll, right? I'll do the rucksacks, that kind of thing. Whether or not I'm going to a high-end place or whatever, you'll find with a little <laughs> rucksack. That has failed to get out of me. I don't know why black has failed to get out of me. Um, I have no in-between. Mm. I'm either in sneakers or heels. And the heels is because of like the whole the work thing. Mm. But, Mostly speakers. Actually, for people who have seen you in your recent, like, at least the pictures that are coming out. They don't believe oh it. Oh my God. But can I just say you look gorgeous. Thank gorgeous. you. Especially the one I think with the red dress. Oh yeah. I'm Thank like, you. oh my Lord. <laughs> Thank you. And now you're saying, okay, but this is your style. This, this is my So style. is it because of TV that you've had to go in that direction? Yep. So before... I'd have to confess, uh -huh. getting me into a dress. Have you ever chased after a child to dress up for church? <laughs> That's me. <laughs> like you literally run after and be like, Linda, come and sit down. It sit takes down. A, it takes a second. Mm -hmm. We just and that must I'm mean like, makeup too. Sure? Makeup, makeup as well. Mm -hmm. I go to work and they're like, Linda, why is your face still so plain? I'm like, but I'm fine because I want to be able to do this <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and run around and eat whatever. But you have to adjust to those things. And to be honest, I feel like it's a side I didn't get to see before. I kind of like it. Mm. I wouldn't say I don't like it. It's nice to see myself in, in, a, in a different light. light. Yeah, and I I look pretty. <laughs> I, <laughs> you do. I do. I have to admit, I look pretty. I, I looked at a picture of myself once, and I turned to one of my workmates. I'm like, how come you never told me I was pretty? <laughs> and he's like, Linda, really? Like you have to hear it from someone else. But I'm like, no, I just didn't believe that that side of me looked like that. And mm. it's a nice thing. I'm I'm just yet to adjust. Yes. Oh, it sounds like you're on a journey. I'm on a journey. A re like, I don't know how hard it's going to be. Hmm. I think the hardest bit is getting people to understand who you, who you are. Because yeah. uh, people would expect as soon as you walk in the media, you have to behave in a particular way. You have to be in particular places. You don't get to do particular things, but I still do those things. Because mm. uh, I could just grab ice cream and walk all over the street. I could walk through... Anyway, mm -hmm. I'm okay with it, yes. but other people seem to not be no, okay with no, it. No, you should hold on to that for as long as you can. Yeah, and people, 
I feel like people need to adjust to the fact that that is who I am and I don't really want to change it. Mm -hmm. That may be the hardest bit. Getting well, I think you'll find a middle you ground are. eventually. Trying. Because most people can't do certain things because they're no longer comfortable doing them. I'm comfortable doing anything. I walk around with no makeup almost all the time mm -hmm. and people got used to that. Just that now that I work on TV and they see me with makeup and they're like, we thought that you'd learn how to do makeup. I'm like, I can't just switch up. Maybe, but I feel like I want to stay me yeah. or to keep the two lives separate. My okay. Linda Dane on media and Linda Dane in real life are two different people. Okay. We're actually two different people. Okay, all right. So you said high school is when you kind of settled in Uganda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where did you go then? I went to Nabisunsa. Nabisunsa? Girls' school, ah. you'd imagine. <laughs> so they didn't teach me a lesson, I realized afterwards. Okay. <laughs> I had to learn so many things about... I was raised with my brother. Okay. And my brother and I were basically the same age. Uh -huh. That's how the whole tomboy thing kind of came, because I would do everything he does. I would wear the shoes he wears. I would, basically, we looked the same. And then I go to a girls' school. Things were just not clicking. I tried. <laughs> Things just weren't <laughs> fine. They would chase after me to put in. Like, you say you tried as in like... I really tried. Like, because they had rules. Uh, you have to be wearing particular garments, like the whole petticoat kind of thing. And they would mm. check me. They would yes. actually check me. Because half the time I wasn't <laughs> wearing them. I just felt more comfortable just being the way I was used to. But even through that, I still went back to being the girl that just cannot wear a particular thing. Like okay. putting on a bra, it takes me like 10 years. Doing, I'm still a boy because mm -hmm. I think I spent the, my Your grow up phase yeah, mm -hmm. with a boy. And my cousins, most of them are boys. The people I stare around, boys. So that's what I knew. What about your friends now? My friends now, boys, <laughs> many them. boys, mm -hmm. I just, I got used to that. My friends are the friends that I've grown up with. I'm not really mm -hmm. everywhere. Yeah. I, you'll find we're the same people almost all the time. You were saying that just to get you out of the house is a struggle. It, you don't it, drink and it, we going fight. out to eat out is like hard. <laughs> it's hard. Getting to eat out, I like it. I would like the idea, but I go. And I sit there and I look at other people, I'm like, I don't fit in. <laughs> <laughs> like, so I just like, can I get it to go? Like, I feel like I don't fit in. Mm. Like, I'm not really the Why? wine and dine girl. Way. I don't know. I like cuisine. I'm a fan of food. I know yeah. where I like to get particular things. But half the time I get those things and I go eat them from home. And I wow. go savage on the food <laughs> where no one can see me. <laughs> okay. Is it that you're not comfortable sitting by yourself in a restaurant or you just I feel... do sit by myself in the restaurant, but people feel like that's not right. They'll always think that I'm either waiting for someone or I have to be with someone or that kind of thing. And I'm like, no, 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 it's no, just, no, 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 I want to eat. I do that all the time. <laughs> I do that all the time. Please do that. It's so I'm, important. People, people don't, they don't see it as right. To Especially if you're a girl, mm. they expect you to be with someone else. And, and then, unfortunately, people feel that they can approach you. Exactly. Yeah. And it's, it's awkward. And I look like a child, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so like, what is this little girl doing exactly. here? Exactly. So they're like, who are you waiting for? Like, I'm like, I just came here to have lunch. Is that OK? Can I just have my lunch? Mm -hmm. Or you ask for the bill, and they're not so sure if it's you going to pay it. And I'm like, I pay for my own food. Wow. So it takes me for a minute to adjust to a girl being by herself, mm -hmm. enjoying her own company. Mm -hmm. Like at times, I just don't want to go through all that. So I'll just go get what I want to get, either move while eating it or go home and eat it from home, mm, whatever. Comfortably. Yeah, comfortably. Yeah. But when it comes to little things, I usually grab ice cream and walk around eating it. Mm -hmm. I like walking. <laughs> That's something okay. I think many people may have noticed. Uh -huh. I, like, I like walking. So just, meaning like you wouldn't take a border or something you'd rather walk? Is I'd rather that what walk. you mean? I'd rather walk. Okay, like... I can drive, I do drive, but I get lazy. Um, <laughs> um, also, the person behind this would actually tell you that. I uh -huh. can leave the car anywhere, just walk. Like, like I'm fine with that. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to see what's happening, like to look around, be able to stop, talk to people. And people judge you in, in a way. They'll think that you're this girl that can't be spoken to, or mm. she's like this and that, unless you speak to me. Yeah. Like, talk to people who talk to me, but people would think I'm unapproachable or something like that. So I just try to stay down to earth. Is that what they call it? Yeah. <laughs> I just try to stay down to earth. But I like walking. Okay. It's a, it's a thing for me. So what's the longest distance like you've done? I cannot even pick one. Like have you walked from like out? Oh, the longest distance. I climbed a mountain. I did on foot. <laughs> so that's a walk. <laughs> Which mountain when? I did uh, Muhavura. 
Wow. That was my birth month last year. Okay. It was just, I was trying to look for a challenge and mm -hmm. like, I, most people thought I wouldn't make it because they would look at me and think, ah, that girl won't it make was it. A I was the only girl that made it. That also says something about her personality. Yay. So who dared you to do it? Who my said? friends, anything they tell me, I just do. <laughs> It's uh -oh. a, okay, for my birth month, I try to make it uh, the particular things I try to get done. I try to give back in my birth month. I try to take on a challenge I haven't done before, try mm -hmm. something new, mm -hmm. like totally new, and interact more, like put myself out there. So that's the time you'd see me as much, or well, maybe not so much because I'll do anything. Mm. So for giving back, I make sure at least I give back something in my birth month. It's one of the things I have to do. I think that's something we should all do. Yeah, it feels good. Though at some point it's kind of painful because <laughs> you're giving out something you like and you're like, <laughs> <laughs> but it feels good to give back. Yeah. You get to see the looks on people's faces and you get to, it doesn't have to be something big. Mm -hmm. What I can, I give up what I can. Yeah. I'm not yet like, oh my God, super rich or something, but it's something my mom taught me how to do, just oh. give back. Okay. So I try to think of a way to be able to do it. I'm like, that can be something I can be doing in my so birth month. So what did you do last so, month then? I gave out shoes. Shoes, huh? I have a lot of shoes. What kind of shoes? Like sneakers. Sneakers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a shoe holic. If that if that is even is that where your I, money goes? I buy so many shoes. My oh, mom no. just looks at me like, when do you wear all these? And I'm like, I wear them. Like this much is a particular outfit, and then this much is a particular outfit. So I wear so many shoes. So, so no, I think we're going to cancel out the tomboy <laughs> side of things because that's Most not very tomboyish. If you already, there were sneakers. That means though. you got your style going on. There, there were sneakers though, so I, I gave out sneakers. Okay. To, to, to. Shockingly, there were boys who could fit in them, young boys. Mm -hmm. But it's a good thing to give back. At least I tried to do that. And the challenge I did last year was to climb the mountain, and okay. I did, and I made it to the top. It wasn't easy though. So I'm not even going to lie. How long was that? It took a whole day. The whole day. Yeah. yeah. Because mm -hmm. my point, at some point, I'm just like, let me get to the top at least. The rest I'll figure it out Did when I get there. you think at some there. point, like, okay, I, I've gone far enough? No, no, no. There was no... There was no, I've gone far enough. I wanted to get to the top. Were you climbing with some of your friends? There were so many people. Some people I just met. Mm -hmm. You actually meet people um, there. Mm -hmm. I had gone with a couple of friends of mine, like two of them. And one was a cousin. But then they didn't make it to the first hut. <laughs> so, so the people I remained with were... I was just talking to I don't yeah. I don't even recall their names sadly yeah. but these are people who are also just trying out something new and most the biggest number were men and they were looking at me like waiting for me to actually stop mm. and at some point I would zone out and just keep walking yeah and I'd leave them behind but I'm not really thinking about it I just walk You're just focused on <laughs> yeah. that I just find myself walking I'm singing along to whatever it is that's on my mind just walking then I would stop I'm like where are these guys I hope I'm not lost <laughs> Yeah, and then I made it to the top, and the only thing I could think of doing was screaming. That's the weirdest thing. <laughs> I got to and just started screaming. Mm -hmm. I couldn't see, like my eyes had, were, it's foggy and every, everything. It's a mm -hmm. different feeling. It's yeah. very surreal. And the air but is thin, so you feel a bit lightheaded. Exactly, mm -hmm. you feel a bit lightheaded. Uh, everyone is kind of like, um, your nose is dripping. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just a whole different feeling up there. And you can't control it, because what you're feeling, the next person is feeling it as well. Yeah.